Good morning, church. What a blessing it is this Sunday. You know, outside, the air is nice and fresh. The sun is out. It is wonderful. You know, um, I had a pretty rough week this past week, uh, a lot of ups and downs. However, uh, as I was driving here this morning, it was perfect weather. It was, it was wonderful, just the trees and nature and God's creation. You know, Elon is moving to Texas, but we get to enjoy California. I mean, it's so wonderful, the air and the, the warmth. It's like 70 degrees, and it's the middle of December. <laughs> like, what more could you ask for? It, it is a blessing. Uh, today's message, Praise God, comes out of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. However, I've asked Jaden to read all the way down to 14. And the reason for that is because in our English Bibles, um, 3 through 14 is broken down into about eight sentences, two paragraphs. In the original language, though, it's one long run-on sentence, 120 words. As Pastor Ted mentioned earlier, the key uh, verb is blessed. And as, as you see the word in verse 3, blessed, and then it goes on about all of God's blessings, how he predestined us, how he redeemed us, how we have inheritance, adoption, sealing of the Holy Spirit. We'll be reading out of the NIV version. If you read from the ESV version, though, the, the blessings that flow from God is uh, it's more visible because there's this key word, in, in love, in him, in him, in him, and it's easier to follow. And the NIV, it, it's, it's still there, but it's a little uh, not as straightforward to follow. But that's essentially why um, Jaden will be reading verses 3 all the way down to 14. However, for today's message, we will just be focusing on verse 3 and 4. Say so with that in mind, let's turn our attention to the reading of God's Word. Good morning, church. Today's reading comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. May you be blessed as you give attention to the reading of God's Word. Is there sound? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom... Good morning, church. Today's reading comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. May you be blessed as you give attention to the reading of God's word. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reached their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who was a deposit, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. This is the holy and errant word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It's almost a title that needs no further elaboration. I mean, praise God, right? Uh, amen, let's call it a day. I mean, we're Christians, uh, praise God. What else would we praise? It's so basic, so foundational. However, this morning, um, it's good to be reminded of the basics. 
we get so, as we mature in Christ, we get so, we grow so much deeper into the Word of God, into theology and doctrine, and, and sometimes we forget how good the basics are. You know, I was driving to church this morning eating gummy bears. Gummy bears, it, it's such a simple candy. I used to eat it when I was a kid, but I forgot how good they were. And I was eating maybe a bit too much, almost half the bag, and I realized uh, that's too, too much gummy bears, but they're, it's so good. It's so basic, but it's so good. Praise God. It's such a basic foundational concept for Christians, but it is so good. Our passage today in verse 3 opens up with, Praise be to God. Praise be to God. The word in Greek is eulogy, which eulogia, which we get our English word eulogy. It means to speak well, to speak good about someone. You often hear during funerals, someone comes up and has a eulogy for the deceased. You know, there's a story about a, a pastor who was once asked to perform a eulogy for a criminal. His brother, uh, both of them were criminals, bad people, whole town knew it. However, his brother passed away, and he came to the pastor saying, Pastor, I want you to perform the ceremony, and, and at the time of the eulogy, I, I want you to call my brother a saint. And the pastor thought about this for a second, and he was a bit hesitant because he knew these brothers. They lived a life of criminal, uh, thievery, stealing. They were just... They weren't good citizens. And the brother saw that the pastor's face was troubled. And, and so he said, you know, I, I want to also donate $5,000 to the church. You know, but you have to say my brother was a saint. And so the pastor thought about this and he thought about it. And, you know, his brother wasn't a saint, but $5,000 for the church. You know, you could buy some Bibles, donate it. You could go on a mission trip. There, there's much work to be done. So he agreed. He agreed to call his brother a saint. And so the day of the funeral came. The pastor gets up to give the eulogy. And he starts by saying, you know, his brother was a no good criminal, lived a horrible life. He was a degenerate. He was a bad person. He drank. He smoked. He cussed lived a totally sinful life. He was a, a person of thievery, a person of deceit, a no good person. But compared to his brother, he was a saint. <laughs> Do you sometimes feel that's how we come to God with? We know that God is good, yes. But we live in such a difficult world. We live with such difficult circumstances, situations, bad things that happen all around us. So much, we might be going through a hardship, a difficulty, a loss, pain, and suffering. But as a side note, we just say God is good without even considering or thinking about it. We say, you know, we're suffering, my leg hurts, my back hurts. I lost a job, this didn't go right, this didn't go right. But you know, God is good. As if it was something apart from everything that we're experiencing. A man once came up to Jesus and he said, good teacher. But Jesus stopped him and said, why do you call me good? Only God is good. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth and created all that we see, every time it says, and God looked and saw that it was good. He created the sun, and it was good. He created the earth, and it was good. He created plants and living beings, and it was good. He created the animals, and it was good. And we have to remember, God is good. That's who he is. Because God is good, we praise him. Because God is good, we offer up our thanks and blessings to his name. However... So often in life, finding the goodness of God is like a needle in a haystack. You know, every day when I turn on Facebook, on my news feed, I scroll up, and without fail, I always see one or two articles about Asians being attacked or, or hate crimes or, or bad news. 
Think about the vaccine that's coming out right now. You know, I haven't come across an article that says, praise God or, or blessings, we have a vaccine. No, all the articles and the, I'm sure there's good articles out there, but all the articles that come to me that come across my news feed or on Instagram or on social media, they're, they're all bad news. It talks about how we don't have enough doses, uh, how we should have bought more or placed bigger orders or, or you know, anti-vaxxers. I mean, we have a vaccine out for the coronavirus, but the headlines is all bad news. Finding good is so hard to find at times. It's almost as if we have to search diligently, like a needle in a haystack. You know, there was a pastor named Matthew Henry. Uh, he lived a long time ago. One night after worship service, uh, he, you know, he did a nightly, um, held a nightly worship, delivered the message, and as he was walking home, a criminal crossed his path and robbed him. Took his wallet, took his money, and then he fled. And as he was walking home, a thought came across his mind. Is this the good I get for being a minister? You know, all these different thoughts started flooding his mind. Like, I, I did this good, but why, why would God let me be robbed? I did this good worship service for his kingdom, but I, I felt like he wasn't protecting me. However, when he got home, and this might be an actual picture of him. You know, I, I don't know, but I don't think so, but it could be. Uh, maybe the camera was invented before lights. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, as he got home, he lit a candle. You can actually tell when this happened. He lit a candle, and he sat down at his desk. And as he was thinking about what just happened, he came down, and he wrote in his journal, God is good. And he said, God is good, and he wrote down a few things. He says, I thank God that I only had a little bit of money and not a lot. God is good. I thank God that he took my money and not my life. God is good. I thank God that it was he that robbed me and not me that was out robbing him. God is good. And as he spent time thinking about the goodness of God, and he searched more and more. He found another one and another one and another one about the goodness of God. Friends, God is good. But we're surrounded by so much hardship and evil and destruction that we have to search and find and fill our minds up with it, turning our hearts and our ears and our eyes to the goodness of God. Psalm 118, we all know Psalm 119, the longest psalm in the Bible. But Psalm 118 is one of the greatest psalms in the Bible. And it begins by saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. And it closes with the same sentence. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. However, in the middle of the psalms, it begins with how the psalmist is in distress, how he's in, uh, he's in trouble, he's in difficulties, he's facing hardships. And then it talks about how he's surrounded by his enemies. They're like bees swarming in on him. His enemies are coming to attack him, and he's surrounded with no one to help save. But then in the middle of distress and being surrounded by his enemies, he turns and looks upon the goodness of God and he says, The Lord is my strength. And in the next stanza, the Lord is my hope. And in the next stanza, the Lord is my salvation. And in the next stanza, the Lord is my favor. In other words, in the midst of distress and destructions, being surrounded by enemies, the psalmist continually turned and looked towards the goodness of God, receiving the grace of God and mercy. And then out of that overflowed, this beautiful psalm, verses 28 and 29, it says, You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
His love endures forever. Friends, the reason why we praise God and one of the foundational reasons why we praise God is because He is good. It's not that He does good things. It's that He is good. It is His nature, His essence. He is good. And so all that He does flows from His goodness. Secondly, in, verse, in the later half of the third verse, it says, um, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. A second reason to praise God is that He is the source of every spiritual blessing. These blessings are found not for everyone, but for those who are in Christ. And they are from the heavenly realms. How are we to understand this concept of the heavenly realms? There is the spiritual and then there is the material. God blesses us spiritually. God also blesses us materially too. We have food to eat, clothes to wear. However, it's not saying spiritual as opposed to the material here. But rather, there is just an emphasis on the spiritual blessing. Also, there's also the eternal versus the temporal. We know that things that are temporal fade, wither, and, and rust. But there are things, adoption and grace and mercy and love and forgiveness that never rust, that are eternal. How are we to understand what, this, what um, our passage means, what Paul means when he speaks about being blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus? One other passage that I want to kind of point to is found in 2 Peter 1 through 3. It reads this. His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Let me read that second part again. Has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. One way we can understand what this spiritual blessing is, is that it pertains to life and godliness. Understand, when we were saved, we weren't born Christians. I mean, in one sense, every Christian that is a Christian has been born, you know, in the second sense, you know, to be reborn. But the first time we're born, um, we're just born. We're born in sin. We're born in death. However, when we are reborn into Christ, into the glorious life, He does not leave us as orphans. It's not saying like, oh, welcome, you're a Christian now, learn to live on your own. No. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. How do we make sense of this? In sixth grade, my mom sent me to the church retreat, uh, to the high school retreat, because my brother was, in, he was a year older than me, so my brother went, my mom's like, hey, can you take him too? So, you know, two for one for the church. So I got to go, and this was in sixth grade. And this retreat, I will never forget, because a lot of stuff happened during this retreat. I made a lot of mistakes in this retreat. I remember this retreat is the first place that I prayed for three hours or four hours, now, the pastor, when they saw me praying, it was late at night, and I was praying. And after we all ended, the pastor was like, wow, you prayed for three or four hours. That's so good. But in reality, I actually just fell asleep. Has that happened? No? Like, you know, the retreats are tiring times. And then, you know, you're praying, and then you, you know. <laughs> so I actually fell asleep. I, I didn't have the courage to tell them that I actually fell asleep. I, I just like... Okay, and I walked away. But during this retreat, there was one time in particular. Um, because I was younger, the advisor that was overseeing me was a guy named John, a college student. And he was in med school looking to be um, a pediatrician. Tall, very handsome, uh, young Asian man. You know, but uh, he was in charge of making sure that I didn't hurt myself or I didn't get lost. 
And I remember at the beginning of the retreat, he said, whatever you need, come to me and ask. You know, I'll help you out. You know, if you need water, you need help with your, uh, you know, making your bed, you need anything, you just come and find me. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Thanks, John. One time, I think it was the second or the third night at the retreat or third day, we're going on this little hike. And you see there's this trail. Uh, There's a nice trail that's been carved out for people to go on. If you want to go from the bottom of the top, you take the trail. But for some reason, and I still don't know why, this young child in sixth grade thought, hey, I'll get to the top of the mountain quicker if I just run up the side. And I remember John coming, he's yelling at me, and he's running up the side of the mountain, and he picks me up and and brings me back down. He's like, what are you doing? Um, At this point, he was frustrated because I I, kind of walked off on my own a few times, you know, to get water or to just, you know, go, go look outside and stuff. And so he's like, what are you doing? Like, why don't you just follow us? Why don't you just come with us? Why are you always running off? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I I didn't have an answer. But I remember him saying those words. You know, if you need anything, just come to me. It's been all provided. That's kind of like what's going on in our passage today. Every spiritual blessing has been given already. We just need to go to God. So often in life, we try to make it on our own. We try to forge our own path, do it in our own strength, with our own wisdom, with our own abilities. When God says, come to me. In other words, are we making use of every spiritual blessing that God has given us, or are we trying to figure it out on our own? Friends, we have been blessed We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. But what good is it if we don't go to God and make use of them? You know, there's this one woman who's famous, Harry, Hetty Green. She's known as American's uh, misser. A misser is a person who hoards wealth. This woman earned the title America's misser because when she passed away in 1916, She had about $100 million, which was a ton of money. I mean, even today, it's a lot of money, but back then, it was a ton of money. But she lived as if she was poor. She scrounged around for food. She ate cold oatmeal because she didn't want to waste money on on, uh, heating it up. She pandered for food. She, she went for skim milk instead of whole milk because it was cheaper. Her son once hurt his leg. And she walked around town continually searching for a free clinic. But by the time she found one, the infection had spread so much that he had to amputate his leg. Just think about this. This woman had a... She passed away with a hundred million dollars, and she's scrounging around for food, not heating up, trying to save on money on milk. Her son had to amputate his leg, all because she would not use the resources she had available to her. Friends, I hope this is none of us. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Let us run to him when we are in need, when we are sick, when we are in dire straits, continually going to him, making use of his blessing. So we praise God for he is good, and we praise God for he is the source of every spiritual blessing. But we also praise God for he chose to cover us. Verse 4 says this, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Now, there's a problem here in this passage. It says, God chose us in him to be, before the world began, before everything was created, to be holy 
holy and blameless in his sight. I don't know about you, but when I looked at my own life, I'm not holy and blameless. Far from it. But our passage says that God made up his mind before I even did anything good or bad to say, in my eyes, you are holy and blameless. There's an implication here. And the implication is that before we did anything good or bad, before time began, before we were created, before the foundations of the earth was set in all of eternity, God made a choice. When it says that he chose to look at us as holy and blameless, it also means he chose to cover us with the blood of Jesus Christ. He chose before all of eternity to send his son and pay the price and cover us. As 2 Timothy 1, 8 and 9 says, Therefore do not be ashamed of me, the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Friends, before the ages began, You know, I understand COVID, staying at home. I understand the difficulties, the financial strains, always seeing our parents or or children and being, like, trapped. However, when we think about how good God is, when we think about how he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, when we think about how he chose us and covered us and saved us before the world even began, How do we not overflow with praise and thanksgiving? How do we not shout from the rooftops how good and how great and awesome our God is? You know, one of my favorite songs is when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he healed me, how he filled me with the Holy Spirit. And you guys know the words, right? It makes me want to shout. It makes me want to praise God because God is good, because God is gracious, because God is mercy, because of who he is. We overflow in praise and worship and adoration. Praise God. Of course, that's what we're called to do. That's who we are. We are people who praise him. And there are a thousand more reasons. But simply... Because he is good, because he has blessed us, and because he has chosen to cover us. What a blessing that is, and how blessed we are because God has blessed us so abundantly, more than we can ever imagine or fathom. And in the coming weeks, Pastor Ted and I will be digging into all the different blessings and the wonderful grace that we've received because of him. You know, um, in worship and re- response, um, the message, it, it might be a monologue where I'm speaking, but also the response is where you get to respond back to us and speak back to us. And so let us write down our responses and questions. If you could go to tinyurl.com slash OCCEC dash response, if you have another device. We have a few uh, worship responses that we like to put forward that we can work together with. Uh, First is, you know, share with us or a friend about how God has blessed you. In other words, turn your attention away from all the difficulties and hardships and, and focus upon what God has done and what God is doing. Share with us. Don't don't hide the goodness of God. And as we continually uh, cultivate a heart that searches out for the goodness of God, you'll begin to see that there's so much goodness that has come upon our lives because of God. Uh, check box B, if you want to take this, and this one is for the family share time. 
if you want to have a family sharing about how God has been good to our family. Uh, parents, this isn't just a, a time to tell our children about God's goodness, but it's a time to, to shape the hearts and minds of our children that God has given us and gifted us. It's a time to, to point out all the, the difficulties, but also the goodness and the grace that comes from God about how God has led our family and how God has blessed our family and, and to give insight into the work that God has done throughout our lives. Checkbox C, if, if you want to say that as I have been forgiven, I will forgive. Just as God chose us and cleansed us and has forgiven us in Christ Jesus, with the forgiveness that we received, if you're holding a grudge against someone, if, if you're withholding forgiveness for someone and would like to say, as I have for, been forgiven, I will forgive, check le- uh, box letter C. There's also a uh, letter D that says, I will soon sign up or have already signed up for trio care. Uh, trio care. That one's actually not on our thing, but it is on our bulletin or our uh, paper handout thingy. I can't think right now for some reason. Um, our, our, bullet, our bulletin. Yes, bulletin. <laughs> so uh, my brother had COVID, and then I went to go test it. I tested negative, but then I went again to the urgent care yesterday because the left side of my face and mouth. Uh, long story short, I have a sinus infection, and so that's probably why I've been having all these different symptoms. But I also praise God for modern medicine and antibiotics, antibodies. Uh, it is wonderful. But there is a letter D on our bulletin that says, I will soon sign up or have already signed up for Trio Care. Trio Care is one of the big uh, church initiatives that we will be doing next year in 2021. It's with the discipleship book by Greg Ogden, uh, Discipleship Essentials. We're essentially asking uh, members to sign up in groups of three to, to, one, uh, disciple each other and, and, and build each other up by the word of God, but also, too, to care for each other in small groups, um, especially in light of COVID and the separation from physical gatherings. We need to invest more time and more care and concern into uh, each other to follow up and, and make sure we're all doing well. And this is one of the uh, opportunities that we have um, churchwide to take part in this. So we encourage, highly encourage that everyone participate, if you're able to, uh, in this trio care. And finally, letter E, if you're interested in baptism or transfer of membership, please uh, check that box, uh, type in your name, and Pastor Ted or I will get back to you. Oops. Worship and giving. Uh, if we have Anthony's. In First Chronicle twenty nine 